have thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please put your hands together for the sweetest band in the land, still, the Republic Band in the Hearts. I urge persons on the outside to please come on in, have a seat, as you are about to start the proceedings. It's imperative that you do so right now, I thank you very much. There are seats on the inner area, also on the deck. If I should please so come on, come on in and have a seat as we about. Come on in. Again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for gracing us with your presence here this evening. And uh, I would like to ask you please to stand now. Okay. 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 He's accompanied by his son and escorted in by Depo. Again, please, Mr. James Slack, ladies and gentlemen. I invite you to remain standing as we endeavor to invoke the Lord's presence in all we do. And it's indeed an honor, privilege to invite a man of the area, for the area, of the band. It's indeed an honor to welcome our Archdeacon. Please, Archdeacon Marshall, please come forward. Shall we bow our heads in prayer? In the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Gracious and ever living God, you are indeed the giver of all good gifts. This evening we give you thanks, honor, praise, and glory for the many gifts and talents and abilities bestowed upon your people of the carnage. We are particularly grateful and seek the honor this evening the outstanding contribution of Mr. James Blackson towards the Angel Abstein Orchestra and the Carnage Football Club for these past 50 years. Also, as we celebrate the launch of this book written by Clevroy Depro Depedine and the awards ceremony that recognizes the hard work and dedication of those who have labored, we thank you for the inspiration, the perseverance, and the talents you have bestowed upon them, this community, the Carnage. Lord, we ask your blessing upon this gathering. May the words contained in this book touch the hearts and minds of readers, spreading knowledge, joy, and understanding far and wide. Let it be a beacon of life, a beacon of hope, and the light to those who will read it. We pray for the success of this ceremony, that it may achieve the purpose of bringing people together, celebrating achievement, and inspiring further creativity and excellence. 
bless the organizers, the attendees, and especially the honorees whose hard work and dedication we celebrate today. Grant us the wisdom to appreciate the beauty of the written word, the beauty of music, the beauty of football, and its transforming power to every generation of this community. May this award ceremony and book launch remind us of our own potential to contribute positively to society and encourage us in our endeavors. As we move forward, keep us mindful of the importance of supporting one another in our creative pursuits. Let us remember that every achievement is a step forward for more enlightenment, compassionate, and an understanding world. We just pray, O oh God, that out of darkness we will see the brightness of your light. And today, Lord, I lay my hands upon our coach, our manager, our arranger, our homeboy, James. And I pray for long life, health, strength, the ability to continue to be creative and be Responsibility to recognize persons in the audience here, which I think is practically impossible. Because we see so many distinguished persons turning out here this evening. So I'll just say good evening and welcome to our guest of honor, Coach Latson. Thank you very much. And also to Jeppo. In fear of forgetting anyone, let me see the persons like Mr. Evelyn Ross, the family Steel, and all those persons who have contributed to the area which we call the wharf. I think we should, we should just say friends and family all, again, on behalf of the organizers. Thank you so very much for being a part of this very important evening. Again, put your hands together for all the people. This is so important because it brings together two very important elements of life on the wharf. And I will not say paranoid, I'll say the wharf deliberately. And the efforts and the contributions of uh, Mr. Clarkson and the skill of Mr. Deprogini to try to document just a portion because it's an area that's so rich in history. It's so important. And I must say that the wharf is much more than what we see today. Today you refer to the wharf, people talk about a ghetto, which is so unfortunate. It is so unfortunate, and it must be noted, was an area that was rich with tradition, culture, and talent. is not what we see today and must be noted. I tend to compare the Angel Hearts organization to that of like the West Indies team. When the West Indies team was in its prime, every West Indian look up to on the radio was proud to be a West Indian. Likewise, the Wharf Band. It was a symbol of excellence, the best we had in the country, and it's so tall, and it's something that we were always proud of. Always. It goes much more beyond just a church or a ranger who have been there for many years. But it's a remembrance of an area that was rich with lots of supermarkets and shops, a performing center, and talented persons. The wharf was rich in history and continues to be. Migration played a part, and we must congratulate the persons who went away where their heart was buried on the wharf. And when I say the wharf is not just around the driveway, around the caronage, as we say, 
But just as the waters filter down from the hills, from Cooper Hill and Tyrrell Street and Tarantine Terrace, all those areas came together and bring together the wharf with the pride of a people's joy, angel harps echoing as being the best and the sweetest ever. And you know, you see things happen and you take things for granted. We were celebrating 50 years of independence and we still do it. I passed on the carnage and I saw the teacher sitting on the planter like nobody's business. And nobody will understand the importance of the contribution made by Mr. Walter Dictator Thomas. Put your hands up. You know, you see these things and it's so painful. And I keep making the point that what we see today is not what is, a, it doesn't reflect the true spirit and the, the integral parts of what is truly the wharf. As a little boy, I grew up on the wharf. Been there. It was such a joy during car carnival time to come outside and step over the pants in the bungalow, because you know that's where it is. Or to be under in person, but to be educated to hear the latest what is going on. That was the life of the spirit of the wharf. To hear the tales of Gubey or enjoy Miss Gertie Nigger Boy. I was tell people that if you eat Mr. Graffit, lemon bread and snow for breakfast or dinner, something is wrong, you're not up the wall. You know, if you jump out the lighter to swim across the carnage, you're not up the wall. So all you talking know that they're from the wall and creating an image of the wall is so wrong. Let us remember the true wall. Let us remember the true the persons who have contributed. Let's, let us remember the power of that band. That is why it's so unfortunate when we hear stories now. The wharf is not, the band is not of the wharf, is not in Tarantino, you know, just think of it. it. was a reflection and a representation of the wharf. Again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for being here this evening. I would like to invite <laughs> Mr. Cleveroy, Depo Depardin, one of the key organizers to give an overview of the rationale behind this whole, how this thing evolved, and the reason why we're here. Would you please put your hands together? For <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Troy Garvey. And again, I want to extend um, profound thanks to those who are here. Um, it's a reflection of our community and um, I would make the distinction now that there is a difference between the carnage and the war. The carnage is like an umbrella. The war is atop of it. Green Street, Tiro Street, Hooper Hill, one lady from England asks, why are you and your brother always big enough to walk and you're from Kupayev? <laughs> she did not understand. She did not understand. Thanks. The Karinach Angel Harps International Kahai was formed a few months ago in North America, US and Canada to be specific. The organization is comprised mostly of former Angel Harps members, agent members, <laughs> senior citizens, and the Carnage Football Club. And in the future that may expand to include others. This group of individuals saw the need to establish a formal organization to assist to highlight, recognize, and promote the achievements of the wharf slash carnage area in a meaningful way. Or in whichever way we can. Sports, culture, etc. With only one exception, 
that of politics. This event is the first of many. Also this evening, in recognizing Maestro James and others, we chose to officially launch my book, our book. Between my rock and some hard places, had a special event. Because within it, it gives a glimpse of what made the war special. A place once allu alluded as a mecca of commerce, despite being marginalized and misunderstood as a community. The book also gives a brief insight of those characters who made the war a unique community that I've been part of. I am sure during the course of this evening, again for the clarification would be given to explain the minute difference between the war and the carnage. And I hope as we continue this evening, the joy of who we are, what we are, would come out from the love we share of each other this evening. Thank you once again. Depo, thank you very much. At this time, we'd like to showcase some talent, the kind of talent that um, evolved and came from the area. Ladies and gentlemen, Ladies and gentlemen, there are so many men who have played a part in the growth of this band. And when you go back to the names of the Lester Boyd, some of the costly boys, persons who have migrated and who have, who have done their thing abroad. And this gentleman did just that. He was a member of the band. And he's back here to thrill us. Just, to, just give a taste. Zach, welcome. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please put your hands together for the third time.
ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together. Please put your hands together for Zach. At this time, we'd like to start with our first batch of awards. And uh, we'd like to call one of the sickest singers in players I have seen in my time. Let's do Orlando Thomas, please come forward. This gentleman, he produced a song that stood the test of time. Like it or not, around the 7th of February, it's echoed far and wide. And uh, is considered, in my opinion, an anthem, the second anthem. That song, Right Out of Darkness. I think for his contribution, I don't think there's any song. I've been around the art form for many, many years. And I cannot recall or put my hand on a song that would have stood the test of time as Right Out of Darkness. Composed, performed, the former Calypso one. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please put your hands together for Mr. Walter Dictator Thomas. and, uh, you know, good authors and so on. This area produced the leader of the Anglican Church community right now. We'd like to recognize Archdeacon Marshall. Please come forward. A member of Angel Hearts. A member of Angel Hearts. Thank you very much, Archie Eagle. 
Now, I've been persons who have been around the band for many, many years, giving human service. And uh, just for the love of Pan, just for the love of Angel Hearts, just for the advancement of the steel band movement in Grenada. One such person is Mr. David Seals. David, will you please come forward? Is Devo here? and the persons who are responsible and the administration that was responsible for allowing that to be sold and used and how it transforms should be held accountable. You should be held accountable. But there's one institution and right now it's on its limping and dying feet. I mentioned it earlier. It's either a gate in the evening or a gate in the morning, but you have to get it. Because it became a stable. Before you go to movies in the Empire or during half time, you have to come out and get it. It's either or. Okay? And you go for, you might get it the hops or the loving bread, but it's either the cheese or the pig's note, but you had to get it. Profit Shop played a pivotal role in being on the wall. I'd like to call Mr. William Profit for his contribution, for his involvement, and not just him, he and his family's contribution to the war. As our Jigna said, probably was the country's first subway. Thank you very much, William, thank you very much. Like it or not, the next recipient has always been around. And her intentions are always honorable and always of assistance and help to anything in the area. And it spans, as you say, the entire wharf. It goes from Market Hill, come right back down Green Street, Cooper Hill, Tyrrell Street, and I refer it always at Tyrrell Street. I personally have a fundamental problem we're calling that street how it's being called right now. That's another story. But this person has always been a part of and continues to be a part of ensuring, contributing here, there, and everywhere. Small areas, big areas, everything. She has been there and she has contributed. And she should be recognized. Ladies and gentlemen, could you please put your hands together for Miss Peggy Nesfield. He has been a part of the Angel Hops organization probably for his life as a little boy and probably one of the most talented persons who could have or should have succeeded the likes of James Clark. He's extremely talented. And uh, he should be recognized for his contribution to the band, the development of the band, and the steel band movement beyond 
go off. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Michael Booz Cyrus. <laughs> Mr. Michael Booz Cyrus. Is Booz here? I don't think he's here, but somebody collects. He's not here, and uh, it will be held in safekeeping for him, and it will be delivered to him. Again, would you please put your hands together for the contribution of Mr. Michael B. Cyrus. We all, we all alluded to the fact that this goes and transcends beyond just Spain. It's of the area. And one of the men who would have contributed tremendously, and he was recognized nationally a couple of years ago, and uh, he has given all of his time, his expertise, to give him boast of a stadium, but before that was, was Tantine, and the football exports at Old Trafford, and also on the big field. And he prepared the field, he organized the competition, got the sponsorship, prepared the field, also refereed the matches sometimes, and did almost everything. And these competitions were completed, and uh, it showcased some of the best talents this country have seen on the football. I don't think he's here. He's not here, and he's not well. Um, I saw him on the Karanaj a few, sometime back, sometime back. But he should be recognized, Mr. Rupert Pierre Williams. <laughs> Depot, you'll take the responsibility of ensuring that I know you've been going all over, so you will continue to do so. She has been around from the bungalow throughout the years. And there's all these anti power corn and steel, this for this, that, everything, at all level, you know. And uh, it's so fitting and important to recognize the contribution that she has made. A lady of the bungalow before my time, but same house. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together. We have something for Miss Pamela Steele. Miss Pamela Steele. Steel, Andy Pam, and Orlando, thank you very much for coming forward to make the presentations. As we said earlier, it's much more than just about Angel Harpsang. It's about a man who has contributed, given of his time, his expertise. And you've heard stories, and just my, I heard one a couple of days ago was concerning trying to get some pants. Back then, it wasn't Republic Bank Angel Harps. It came to the years in the city. Shell, Phoenix, there are a number of different sponsors, but this gentleman has always been there. I'd like to invite now Mr. Cleveroy Depro Depro Jean, who will blend the evening's proceedings with the book and the tribute to the coach, the arranger, Mr. James Clarkson. Again, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Jeffrey. These are some commendations that came in. And this is from James, former army buddies. He was also a soldier. We are very proud of you because we know that this honor is well deserved. And you are still our Wakax. <laughs> the second one is from Franklin Frankie McIntosh. That name should be familiar to many of you. He is an accomplished musician, arranger, contemporary of James, he sent this message. Wow. 
so well deserving. James, like myself, have received many awards, but being a recipient of an honorary doctorate in music is the highest form of appreciation one can receive. And as for James, this is long, long overdue. Put your hands. I hope in the not too distant future, my friend will be nominated and recognized for his contribution at that level. Many with far lesser credentials than this have received such. Put your hand together. Please extend my heartfelt congratulations to him. And this is personal. I don't know who his buddy Sly McIntosh, but he says um, his buddy Sly McIntosh would be happy to hear of this, but Sly is not well. You know who is Sly? Okay. Just finish all five string spots of Sunny Side. You know what he's talking about? <laughs> Intend to tackle the feeling tonight if no obstructions. You know what he's doing? <laughs> A personal congratulatory um, note from Frankie McIntosh to my friend James Clarkson. I always, this is another um, tribute, I always knew you are one of God's special handmade individuals. Happy to know people are now getting around to know you personally. Your character and the gifts God entrusted to you in multiple divisions, I always wondered what it is like to be Sister James Clark soon. I go back in time to Expo 67 which was held in Canada. Your leadership and achievements within the Trinidad and Tobago Regiment Band. Your musical ability was not confined to an area, but impacted many all over the world, including North America. I clearly remember how your unique musical arrangement trans transformed and stirred this one band from Antigua and the media comments, having never heard one of their own local bands playing at that level was something to be held. Enjoy this special time and may the Most High Yahweh bless you forever. And finally, from the members of the Joey Lewis Orchestra, those of you who are under 50, you can ask those who are aging. <laughs> this is from Joey Lewis Orchestra. Congratulations on all your achievements. We, the members of Joey Lewis Orchestra, are so proud of this special occasion for you. We know you have been a musical pillar to your people and country, and also to us, all here in Trinidad and Tobago, May God bless you in every way. We thank him for having you in our lives and the fraternity of exceptional maestros. Thank you very much, Depo. In form of the tributes coming in, I once had a conversation with Roy Cape, and Roy always speaks of his love for Grenada, being from here, and he always speaks about two individuals, one Peter Philip, who he always said was a better saxophone player than him, and James Clarkson for his musical talents. You say you think that James is the only person trying to explain it to me. For example, if a glass falls on the ground and breaks, James can tell you what key or what thing the song is. And Roy was 
Tick is somebody that once he comes into the island, once you meet him, the first person that he asks for is where's where's Clarky? That's the first thing that he asks for. My apologies, the phone should have been silent. So I guess we could continue showing the blessings, and there will be so much more to be said about this outstanding body of work that was done not only for Angel House, but beyond the boundaries of this country and the recognition in which he gets from the Star Wars you have heard from the likes of Frankie McIntosh and these guys when you saw it, speak the guys in Trinidad, the whole set of arrangers and, the pro and producers, they all mention one name, that's the James Wackax Clarkson. We have a couple more awards to do. We'd like to call up on Mr. Ulrich Fraser to please come forward to do those awards. As we continue, he's known as Skipper. What I, the information I got in, in reference to what I said, and I wouldn't say much more about Clarkson wearing the police hats. Skipper was also involved. It, it involved drums and getting pans, the drums to make the pans and then kind of things like that. That's way, way back then. Ladies and gentlemen, he has always been around. Stalwart, in the band, supporter, you know, these are the guys one can remember. In, when we had the incident in St. In St. George's, it was 1973 it was. And these were the guys, the Lilies, and these guys who, who secured the little boys in the middle of the band to protect them and all that kind of thing. So he was there. I was referring to Mr. Bruce Bain, who we, uh, we commonly and affectionately call Skipper Bruce. Skipper Bruce, thank you. Again, ladies and gentlemen, Skipper, please come forward. Looking as a young boy, man. Sharp as a tack as usual. Skipper Bruce, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks very much, Skipper. Also, Mr. Brian Sylvester, who's a current member of the band, would like to make a few comments on behalf. Skipper Dongo, I just want to highlight something as regards to Skipper Bruce Bay. A lot of people here may not, may not know, and some may not remember. So for those who don't know, I would like to enlighten you, and for those who don't remember, I would like to remind you. Angel Ops took a little hyenas after the revolution. Some of the guys went into the army, whatever, whatever militia, what, what have you. The reformation of Angel Hearts was on this man's shoulder. This man called a few people around and said, you know what, this is a level of, I wouldn't use those words, a level of what you might call it, we need Angel Hearts back. We sat on the basketball court on the steps, an evening in the sun, and Skipper Bruce remind all of us what Angel Ops meant to the wharf. And because of that, we need to reform Angel Ops. So in 1981, I believe it was, or 82, we went back in the panyard, a few of us, and went back on the road, that carnival, and then back in the panorama in 1983, with an arrangement that Mr. James Clarkson called Tourist LC. But the reformation of Angel Hearts, this young fellow here brought us back. And for that, I want to recognize you additionally. Thank you. If you want to tell the people, you can tell them, Skipper. It's your time. You, you can tell them. Oh, I, I yeah, have to speak a little bit. Hello? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, the Senator, the representative over there, 
ladies and gentlemen, friends, Bruce Bay from the wharf. Uh, I, grew up, I grew up on the wharf and um, around graphic shop in the back there. My mom lived there and you can go my, oh, my mom went to Trinidad and so I live. I grew up with my aunt on the wharf right there. In the Coles Market, you know, right now with the, the, the telephone company. My first job was with my father, Sir Tommy Wells, at Bond's Point position. I was 14 years. And he took me on. They, they were building a new engine. I was so interested that he took me on at um, three, three, three tenths a day. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> I did very well in, the, in, in, in the, my profession. I must say it's not a boost or anything, but when I left Queen's Park in 20, 20, um, 1940, I'm going to the 19. 1946, they, they named the power station at Queen's Park after the Bruce Bean plant. My, my performance was really good. I, I worked hard, I worked honest, and um, I think I came out on top. I represented the other, the other football side from the WAF Sporting Club. I got in there in the junior, in, this, in the second league. And when I ended up, I got open, not only captain Sporting Club, but I captain the Grenada football team. Friends, the war is, as Depo put it, it's a highlight. A lot of people didn't understand where the war was and why. From Otway, or let's say we, let's say that Dr. Ross in in Dutnari, you, from, this man here, he know, he know what I'm talking about. <laughs> to Bones Point, represented the wharf. From Otway, from, yes, Otway Garage, to the post office of the garage. <laughs> People laugh at that. Hey, you know, I, I don't want to. I don't want to keep the um, keep you all uh, too long here. Um, I would just like to say that the Lord has given me a bonus on January the seventeenth this year. I was ninety years. Skipper Bruce, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together. Football captain, the biggest power plant in the country named after him. And there's one common thing. He's of the wharf and from the wharf. Put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen. The next recipient we'd like to call on, I know he's not here, but we need someone to collect on his behalf. As an administrator, as an outstanding table tennis player, also of the wharf, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Charlie Hood. Charlie is not the best. I know Yankee Man will collect on his behalf and ensure that it's delivered to him. Yankee Man, thank you very much.
you know, he uses opportunities to highlight certain things. And Brian came forward and speak about the contribution of Skipper in bringing the band back together. But there are many, many other persons. And I want to remind Brian and David and all the present administrative structure of the band. You must remember those persons always. Ensure Panorama when you've given all the t-shirts and so ensure that Mr. Ross gets one and Skipper gets one and Lily gets one and all these persons get and change to, just to show appreciation and thanks for the work that they would have done. And also let's ensure always that one goes to San Susi to Mr. Walter St. John who has contributed immensely to Angel House playing on the cool night counter sometimes, droning in the pants for himself because they're all his late. And you know, so these are things that the history of the band is so rich, but it represented a proud area, and this gentleman should be recognized. Mickey, I know he's not here. Would you please come forward to receive an award on his behalf for his contribution to the Angel Harp Steel Orchestra. His son receives on his behalf. Again, a round of applause for Mr. Walter St. John. And finally, again, of the wolf. Just recently, this gentleman did a display in New York City, highlighting and showcasing for the independence celebrations. And I told him, I said, they wouldn't understand. I think he plays two in the competition. I said that you, they would not understand. It's way over their head. I'm sorry that I meant to encourage him to come to this place here today. When he showcased and built models of iconic buildings on, on, you know, on the wharf, among them the, the Empire Cinema. You know, and it's, you know, someone asked me a while ago about the comment I made about the Empire Cinema. And it's pretty, pretty strong. Is, is something that led to the demise of the wharf when that decision was taken to sell that place to put uh, a business and not secure it as a performing center because it was the best on the island and we have never replaced it with anything. Instead, they went and purchased Reno, which could not serve the purpose. You know, check back the facts and you understand who did it. A former was part of the decision making at the time. But he saw it fit to showcase and highlight, you know, these iconic structures on the wharf, which I think was so fantastic. He has been a part of this institution. He has been a part of the region. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Mr. Ron Steen. This is a surprise to Ron. Those of you who know Ron, this is one of the hardest things for him to do. But in the book, this is what is said of Ron. The aged stalwarts of Carroll Street and Raw, Raw Steel for surrendering his home. For surrendering his home when we needed a man cave to meet with satisfied stomach. So when our spouses say, well, I didn't cook, we would simply say, that's okay. We're going by raw steam. Again, thank you very much, Roy. Thank you very much. Ulrich, thank you very much. And you mentioned, the Apple mentioned you're going by road, 1500 Carroll Street was an extension every weekend. Everybody who of the area, from the area, will, and in the area will pass through. So you hear all the stories and all the tears. And also if you're stranded and you're in New York City and wanted a place of rest, you call on the road. Ron, thank you very much. Let's put your hands together. Thank you. Lots of talk, ladies and gentlemen, lots of talk, and there will be much more. But we like to be entertained by, again, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome. Let, I'm, taking, I'm taking the mic from Troy, because we have one more presentation to do. And everyone come up and make this presentation.
position. It's a top secret, so I will announce it. Therefore, we'll do that. The former captain of Angel Love will do that. Carnage Angel Hops International, with appreciation, present this plaque to Troy Garvey. <laughs> I know he did that. We couldn't let him know that. Otherwise, we would not have an MC tonight. In recognition for his valuable contribution and dedication to the Wharf community over the years. I want to make one comment. There's one person who in here who has to receive a very special award. It will not be done yet, be done at a later date, you will be advised. And I'd like you to put a law. Let, let the war here because I'm one of the persons who say that this function should not have been here. It should have been on the wharf. But that's a different story. I'd like us all to put our hands together for the former manager, for a man who have contributed more great our resources. And I give you the assurance that a special presentation will meet him at a later date. Ladies and gentlemen, please recognize, put your hands together. He's here this evening for Mr. Evelyn Ross. You know, we speak of the, one of the best steel band recordings ever, including Trinidad and Tobago and around the world, and Brighter Out of Darkness stands tall to this day. And I think without the efforts, the initiative, and the resources of that gentleman, it would not have been possible. Ladies and gentlemen, again, Mr. Every Ross. At this time, we'd like to call on the sweetest band in the land. The Republic Bank Angel House. Come and play one for Mr. Ross from the Blues Bones. Play one for Mr. Ross. Thank you very much. Come on, let's go.
ladies and gentlemen. They play one more selection for us.
again, we see lots of persons who are of the area and from the area who have made contributions in so many places and so many things. We see just joining us now is Mr. Royston Lahi. Will you please put your hands together for Mr. Royston Lahi? And also, I saw a bit earlier on, Mr. Joseph Cummins, by far one of the most talented spokespersons this country have ever seen. Will you please put your hands together for Mr. Joe Cummins? I know he's on the outside. And also all the other persons I see, Miss Regan, Ned and Mendez, she's here. Please put your hands together for her. She will be a part of the band and do lots of work with the band. So there's so many people over the many, many years. And uh, one will only hope that this initiative will continue to showcase and highlight the area which we open by saying the war is much more than what we see today. Don't be fooled and don't be misled. The war is rich, rich, rich. It's one of the richest areas in this country. Again, let's put our hands for the war. As we continue with the program, we like to call on another product of the area, one of the most outstanding journalists that you'll come across, talented writer. Would you please put your hands together for Mr. Lincoln Toro Deputy, who will do a brief tribute to the arranger, the coach, the law enforcement officer, our own Mr. James Clarkson. Good evening, good evening. Before I do this brief bio of James Clarkson, I would also like to recognize the St. Joseph Convent girls who were the first for the time girls in the office Good evening. Tonight is primarily, not only, but prim primarily about James Clarkson, coach Clarky Wakat. It's about honoring him for his contribution of more than half a century to the Carinage Wharf community as a steel band arranger and football coach of the Glamour Boys, better known as Carinage United. James is soon to celebrate a birthday. He was born on April 21st, 1944. Let's wish him happy birthday in advance. Happy birthday to you. His father was a musician and leader of the combo Solid Senders. Naturally, therefore, James was very exposed to music at an early age. He appeared on stage with the Solid Cinders and later joined the band of the Royal Canadian Police Force Band. By 17, James Clarkson was a member of the band of the Trinidad Defence Force as lead arranger and first trumpet player. In Trinidad, he also became well known with some of the men who themselves be have become top-notch musicians. They were mentioned Frankie McIntosh. He also was a member of the great All-Star Steel Orchestra. James Clarkson played with All-Stars. Musicians have been recognized by regional institutions such as the University of the West Indies. We believe that James Clarkson is equally deserving of a UWI or SU doctoral award. And we all should rally around that cause and lobby. If you are Greek, say yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. After his return to Grenada, James Clarkson rejoined the police band. And by 23 years, he was the director of music of the RGPF band. There's some old lamen was here, Michi and Skem. Clarkson distinguished himself, is, is himself as a musician, which included studies in Canada. His talent took him regionally and internationally as well. He has received numerous awards, including the 2013 Naniki Caribbean Jazz Safari Legends Award. Give him a round of applause. Tonight's honor to James Clarkson from Carinage and, and Angel Harp International recognizes him for his services to Carinage United Football Club and to Angel Harp. He was the band's musical director on the recording of Brighter Out of Darkness, 
and he has won more than a dozen senior national panorama championships with the Angel Harp Seal Orchestra, Orchestra, including 1973, 1984, 1985, 1987, anybody could get us the next year? 1990, the next year? Whoa, yeah boy, that was another thing. 1991, 1993, 1998, 19, okay, you know your thing with Steve. 2005, 2008, 2011, 2015, and we won't mention the second place one point losses. Well, you know, there are lots of them. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a round of applause to the maestro, James Wackers Jackson. Not to mention the many times when the likes of Lola Albino and them confessed they couldn't understand what was happening. Was way beyond their un understanding and their, and their comprehension. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to call on Mr. Ronald Bain, who will come forward and pay tribute to Mr. James Box. Mr. Bain, please come forward. <laughs> anyway, um, I know he didn't expect to see me, but I know I was going to be here. But before we go on, um, you might be able to correct this, but I think this place, the Yacht Club, is very synonymous with this young man. This is where he was playing with Star Descenders when he was recruited for the West Indies Regiment Band. Right here in the Yacht Club. <laughs> he just wonders sometimes how you know these things. But I could always speak here, I call him, we're talking and everything else, and we're talking about his history. And that's how we get to know a lot of these things. But this is something new. This is something I knew for a long time. Before I go be, um, further, I want to make an announcement. It has been on public media, um, social media, that myself, Wackax, and Scale planning to open my brass band. <laughs> I don't know who started the rumor, but I'm going to clear it up. We have no intention of opening a brass band. When we spoke about it, I tell him, I tell him I'll play cowbell. Well, he wanted to play cowbell too, so we're going to have two cowbell. So, so far we love a sax and two cowbell. But this is not true. But anyway, this is, um, this is my band master, my band leader, and my very close friend. It seems as though in my career, I was always following James. When I joined the government band, I hated talking about Royal Grenada Police Force Band. We weren't that at the time when he was with the band. It was a government band. But when I joined the government band, I took his spot. Because he only had three trumpet players. And I became the third. Then, he went on. I joined his father's band, Solid Sanders, and I became the second trumpet player. But then, um, one area we crossed up. I arranged for um, Angel Arts in 79, and we won Panorama. Um, well, 69, sorry, and we won Panorama. Everything had come together, like, um, the tuning of the pants, the players, I involved in music, and everything came together at that optimum time. And we won Panorama. We went back and we won um, the carnival, um, what we used to call it then. We won, we won festival and then we win Panorama. Right? And here again, James took, a, took over from me. I never realized that he'd been there with that band some 50-something years. But that's as long as I've 
left um, ambient states. So when you speak about someone that is endowed to music, I mean, I know of nobody that I can compare to him. I've played with lots of musicians in the U.S. Army. I've been to their school, met lots of fine musicians. But when it comes to matching James, and somebody spoke about Peter Phillip, I have seen no class with those two guys. I will share a story with you all about his music endeavor. We had a little group in New York. Um, I don't think anybody knew the name. Yeah. <laughs> Who say Obia? <laughs> but we had a little group we called Obia. And we were going to do a game with Calypso Rose and um, Charlie, Charlie Rooks. So we got there this Saturday. We spent all day. He nor Rose is satisfied. And they keep on, you know, always complaining, complaining, change this, change that. So we left the Saturday evening, and we went and hung out, hung out by him, you know, on Claxon Street. <laughs> That's where he lived. <laughs> so we hung out and everything else, and it was customary. If we practice a Saturday, we'd hang out by him the night if we know nothing doing. Get up Sunday morning, and we'll go over by Allen and buy some bread on, on uh, Nostrum. So I left with a buddy from um, Grenville, and we went over to Allen to buy the bread. When we last left, he decided, look, that's it, man. By the time we got the bread and got back to his home, he had rewritten the whole score. He has rewritten the whole score completely. And it did not take us 30 minutes. And he had the whole thing done. So that's the kind of guy he is. You hear all the um, compliment complimentary remarks that came in from musicians like um, um, the Macintosh um, family, Frankie, he spoke about um, Sil, and all these guys know of this guy. But I want to say one thing, that we acknowledging James Wackax, as we call him, for what he has done for this community. But it's time that Grenada start acknowledging what individuals have done for the country. Trinidad has tried several times to steal him. If you ask several Trinidadians now about James, they'll tell you, oh, he's a Trinidadian. That's a Trinidadian, they'll swear to God he's a Trinidadian. But because of love of this country, he refused to denounce his citizenship of Grenada in order to get a scholarship from the government of Trinidad and Tobago. And that's the guy he is. He refused to non denounce his nationality. So it's time that we say thanks to him. I'm not here to say thanks to you, buddy. I couldn't miss it. Thank you. You used to write music on the floor, we do that. <laughs> you want me to tell them also about when I break up the people's stage in New York? <laughs> I, ride the truck, I ride my car up on the people's stage, the people's stage fall and all they say, Wackax, I tell you about this damn Michino. I tell you about Michi, I tell you Michi ass crazy. <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. We now like to invite Mr. Peter David, Parliamentary Representative for the area, to make some brief remarks and pay tribute to Mr. James Clarkson and also the Wolf. Put your hands together for Peter David. Good evening, everybody. My dear brother Clarkson, members of Angel Hearts, other senior members, Archdeacon. Good evening. I see Senator Joseph in our presence. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, let me acknowledge my brother Clarkson. In fact, I've known James all my life, but I, if you ask me what I recall about James, it's a close relationship he had with my father. Very, very close relationship. Always see them 
James would come to the house and they'd be shushun. I know they're shushun about the matter. They're always shushun about something. And he's, my father always recognized young persons who have talent and who are ambitious because of his own trajectory in life. And I think that that was one of the things between him and James, seeing a young man who really took a trajectory that was very positive. I think the thing I also want to recognize about James, we're talking about Angel Harps and we're talking about the past, we're talking about music, but his commitment to the youth. And I think that is something that we must try to, to, to revive. Angel Harps is not just a steel band. It was the area, the thing, the entity that young people on the carnage, I see my friends are now rebranding it the wolf. Well, the wolf, yes. The carnage seemed to be too modern for them, so my, my friends are going back to the wolf. So the, the way the young people gravitated to Pan. And this brings me to where we are today and the role of persons like James in the past. I mean, as a police officer, James also made a very serious contribution to our society, not only as a musician, as a police officer. In fact, when I think about all the problems we have today, the other day me and somebody was talking about if James was there and his ability to keep things on a level. So I think Clarky is not only well known for music, and I heard his brother speak a minute ago about his contribution to music, but his contribution to keeping our society, keeping security, and keeping our young people well. I think today, with all of the problems we have, with young people and I come in contact with it every single day. It is very serious, very, very serious. A generation of young people are coming up that do not recognize the things that we recognize. I'm not saying we should go back to the past, but I'm simply saying we should keep our eyes on the future. And I think James will have a role to play in some kind of consultancy, yes, I think sometimes we discard. So we pay tribute to James and then we stick him away in a corner, not recognizing the contribution yes, he could make for tomorrow. And that is what I ask Angel Harps to do tonight and all the other steel orchestras. See yourself as part of the community. Where are the young people tonight, I ask? Where are they to see the tributes to the people in the past and hear the stories of the past so that they too can emulate that and help build strong communities on the carnage and throughout our communities in this country. So I don't want to give a long speech, but I thought I'd pay tribute to the fact that James made contributions outside of music to young people, to security, and several other areas. And I urge HR Labs and all the institutions present here tonight, all the persons present here tonight, to keep our eyes on ways in which we can focus on young people on more, a more progressive agenda, an agenda that is more positive rather than where I see us heading today. Thank you, James. I wish you well. You have a future, so we don't want to treat you as if you're all past. There are things you need to do for us for tomorrow. Thank you. May God bless you. Thank you very much. I think it's fitting to inform and seek the assistance of persons present. Toro mentioned the honorary doctorate. Just let persons know that that initiative is in train. And the powers that be, wherever they are, if it can be articulated. In recent times, we have seen such awards bestowed upon the likes of Alston Cyrus Beckett, the late Leroy Khalees, Roy Keith, David Rother, a number of persons. And I think it's quite fitting that that initiative be propelled. And uh, here in Grenada, it was suggested that we do it on two fronts through the UWI and also from the SGU platform. And I can say for, with a certainty that I, that is in train. It's not about getting the cat out of the bag, but it's a matter of doing what is right and recognizing someone who is quite deserving of it, Mr. James Clarkson. At this time, I'd like to invite a friend of his, and I was told I've never heard him play, I was told he's a bad saxophone player. 
So would you please put your hands as we welcome Mr. Michael Skell Redhead, who is your musical tribute to the Mandarin Center. Um, before I start to blow for you, <laughs> I just want to say a few words about James Clarkson. As a little boy, I was always in awe of this guy. A little tiny guy, such a great musician. And one, one of the amazing things about him, he played so many instruments at such a young age. That was unheard of during our time. Mitch, you could vouch for that. Um, I'm not going to go into very much detail. Um, I'm just going to scan the surface. Wakax has turned out to be, I think, one of the Caribbean's greatest musician, not just the Caribbean, but the world's greatest musician. I spoke with James a couple days ago, and he said that you are one of the best musicians he has ever played with. Um, not only that, he said you are a well, nice guy, peaceful guy, and all of that, but the best thing he said is that he has never played with a musician as good as you are. This guy has done so much musically. Um, I mean, he was part of the Trinidad band, as um, I think some, someone, somebody said, that um, uh, played for Expo 67. Wakax has gone on to play with people. Any one of you heard the name Miles Davis would know. You would have the greatest set of musicians longing to play with Miles Davis. If you ask musicians uh, who want to play with Miles Davis, you would have a line uh, like circumventing the globe about three or four times um, for the caliber of musician that uh, Miles Davis was. It's not playing Miles Davis. For, uh, for, you, for those of you who don't know Miles Davis, that statement I'm making, I mean, it is, yeah. it is not a small statement. He has written or transcribed music for Diana Ross. I mean, everybody knows that name as one of the iconic divas of the world. This guy there has written music for Diana Ross. But let me tell you something. You do some wrong things in your DSP, you know? Very wrong things. Now, how dare you take the noble brass instrument and combine it with pan? And now everybody is steel and brass. I mean, it's, 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 it, it, it's a very recognized thing and an, honor, an honorable thing in the music, you know, in, in the music industry. Now, you, you took it upon yourself to start something like that. You were, again, you stopped the order of Boozy and Hawks music, and you take it upon yourself to play Calypso in the, in, in, in the band. I mean, how could you do something like that? Imagine somebody like, you know, the old, uh, respectable folks, the people in authority, say like Ben Roberts, right? <laughs> Imagine what these people say when you, when, when, when you dump um, like Colonel Boogie and Parade and, and, and you know, and the Kenya March, and you play Calypso. Now, not just in Grenada, but anywhere in the Caribbean, we recognize our music. We, 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 we discard all the boozy and hops and all those kind of music and we play in our local music. Thanks again. Thank you very much for that. Um, <clears throat> the, even me, I was upset with you. Now, I, when I heard this man, like he gave up music to become a policeman, I said, but this man mad. How could he, how could he give up music? I mean, he was so great in music. He gave up music and he joined the police. At age 25, he was the youngest police inspector in the Grenada Police Force. He, 
akan uh, uh, one more thing I want to mention. Um, anyway, he uh, okay. I, I don't remember, but anyway. <laughs> Your talent, your talent, sir, is beyond, way, way, way beyond, beyond, beyond what you, beyond what you know. Um, I feel so proud to call you my friend. So I'm going to do a little well, excerpt from your first uh, the recording of uh, Bright Out of Darkness. Um, I am very honored to, to, uh, to have to do something like that for you. Thank you. 
simply amazing. I would easily say, outside of hearing the Taker sing that song, it is the best rendition and interpretation of Brighter Out of Darkness that I have ever heard. Please put your hands together for the second Simply fantastic. This was simply amazing, ladies and gentlemen. Simply amazing. We'll take a couple minutes of the program just to invite a few persons to pay, make a few brief remarks and just a few. But there's one lady who came and insisted that she'd like to say, make some brief remarks. Very, very brief. I think she is one of the senior operators and manager of this establishment. Is she close by? In the meantime, is there, is there anyone who would like to come and to who would like to make a few brief remarks, say something to the coach, say something to the arranger, anyone? Oh, she's coming here. She had an encounter, I don't know what it was, and she would like to speak to it. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, Mr. Clarkson. Um, 31 years ago today, you became responsible for me moving to Grenada. Um, you became responsible. <laughs> you became responsible. You were part of my journey moving to Grenada in September 2022. So, I'm going to make it very brief, but me and my father was building a house and we encountered some very difficult builders who tried to rob us, basically. And I was crying. I was crying one day to a friend who lived on the Carinage. And he said, there's one man who will help you. And he brought me down to where you play the Angel Hearts and you was practicing with the band. And I was stood in front of you crying. And he said, you said to me, come up to the, uh, the fort. So the next day, I took myself, I was only 17, and I went to the fort to see you. And you and, at the time, Corporal Parks met me on the Esplanade, the old Esplanade, the one that the awareness man owned the Esplanade, and we spoke. And whilst we was talking, the two guys who tried to rob us of our money when we was building the house walked past. And you and Corporal Parks grabbed these guys and I've never in my life seen a hand go up the back of somebody so far. Anyway, let's, let's go forwards now. They went to court. I remember seeing you about a year later with my naive English self. <laughs> and we were studying NCB Bank. And I shouted, Mr. Clarkson! And you looked at me and I give you the biggest kiss on your cheek. And that's how I met you today, with a big kiss. Okay? So, let's go, let's go forward. I've loved Grenada all my life, from the time I landed when I was 16. And we built our house. You was instrumental in us getting our money back and also building our house and finishing it. I thank you, Mr. Clarkson. You gave my father 26 brilliant years after we retired in the UK, in Grenada, and now I've got my time. I manage the Yacht Club. So I thank you. You are amazing. It seems like kissing is a big thing for me. Yeah. I couldn't remember that at all, but now, do it again, do it again. I know we have um, artists, if there's any, I'd like to call on somebody who would like to make a few, who would make a few co uh, uh, comments, being involved, and who have written on plan. Papi, come. Come see a few minutes, come. Quickly. And please note, brief. Please note, brief. Good night, all. 
Since brevity is the call of the day, I wish that each and every one of you purchase a copy of the book and read the preface on it because that's where I express my sentiment and my pen is my conscience and my soul. So read the book. God bless you all. government here that I can see and being the only member of the government who is an authentic wolf girl. I wouldn't say authentic tongue girl because that somehow offends some people. <laughs> so I'm a proud wolf girl. I am very proud of my neighbor growing up, Depo. Congratulations on authoring this book about our community. I encourage each of you to leave here with a copy. But the man of the moment, one of my favorite people, one of the persons who make us of the war very proud. And sometimes when he didn't get the arrangement right, he spoiled the whole carnival. <laughs> because you know when Angel Apps doesn't win, the carnival done for us. And when we don't win, as far as we are concerned, the team he hired me too high flown for them judges, them judges beneath him. They didn't understand the arrangement. Because as far as we are concerned, every panorama arrangement is a winning tune. And we have to win every day. And Clarky could never get it wrong. Thank you, sir, for your many years of human service to our country musically. We recognize you as a maestro par excellence. As far as we are concerned, you're the best in the region, and we are proud to have such an outstanding son. Not just as a musician, but as Choi just mentioned, as an outstanding law enforcement officer. And so I congratulate you on this milestone, and I say on behalf of myself, my family, my deceased mother, who was a diehard angel arts lady. Thank you again. And keep shining, you have a lot in you. I hope you keep arranging for angel arts because we have some more panoramas to win. I think a certain band from across, so they tie the record this year, something so. So, we have plenty more. Panoramas to win. So I hope you're not retiring from arranging for the band. Enjoy the rest of the evening. Enjoy your moment. Congratulations again. Thank you very much. There are two more persons we'd like to invite. Up. And uh, the next person is the person who shared the journey with me in terms of the promotion of uh, the culture because what we hear today and what we enjoy today it was never like that it was never ever like that i often tell persons calypso and so used to be a half an hour program on a saturday afternoon on the radio and music was never existing on the radio at all was never played i was never recorded and this person shared the journey and he would like to make a few comments harold pice ladies and gentlemen please put your hands together Thank you, Troy. Uh, a wolf boy. <laughs> the world is a stage. The men and women are merely players. They have their exits and their entrances. And one man in his time plays many parts. First, the infant, mewling and puking in the nurse's arms. 
Shakespeare, as you like it. This man has played many parts. He epitomizes that saying from Shakespeare. He is a musical arranger, really and truly, he's a musicologist. Not just a pan arranger, he's a musicologist. Because this man can arrange anything with a sound that sounds like music. So he's a musicologist. Right, Father? There you go. One thing I didn't hear mentioned tonight, James was also a diplomat. You forget that? Yes, and a cricketer. And a cricketer. There you go, I commentated when he played. You know? I got very close to James Clarkson when I visited in when I visited Cuba in 1982. And he was the ambassador or consul general then. And we got together on many occasions to do certain things and bring in the communities together. My apartment where I lived was a very big apartment. And James was instrumental in talking to me and said, listen, Paisley, we got to use your place to get people together. And we missed carnival that year in 1982. And uh, we got all the Grenadians in my apartments, Foxa, apartment 3A, Foxa, right by opposite Copelia, those of us who've been to Cuba. And we had great times, and there I got to know the man. And I was in awe of this gentleman who served Grenada so well in many, many departments and very deserving of the award here this evening. Thank you. Also, quickly, uh, Clevoy Depot Depardine's book, I think, is fitting for the wharf. As you say, it's not just, the wharf is not just a community. The wharf is a legacy that continues to live. Okay? And I'm happy to say, even though I'm not a wharf boy, but I'm happy to claim being a wharf boy tonight. Because my mother, my mother grew up in the villa. And Terry Marichon knows that well. <laughs> right? He used and, and Miss Pamela Steele, I spent many Saturdays in her house. And me and her son Andy, we went and fished behind the hospital to hold shitty. <laughs> I worked with Troy and I worked with Toro. So I'm a bona fide wolf man in a true sense. And my first brother, Dale, was born by Miss Nurse Radix. So you see, I claim him tonight. Thank you very much. Congratulations to everybody. And have fun tonight. Thank you very much, Harold. And finally, we'd like to invite a lady who's been a part of the Angel Hub Dynasty to make a big tribute to the arranger. Please, put your hands together for the arranger. Good night, everyone. I, I will be very brief. There are three things I would like to say that I remember James for. Um, in the mid 1980s, I was. I remember I was the only female to play with Angel House in two panoramas. It was James who was the arranger, so I experienced James arranging um, for a uh, panorama tune. We won the first year I played, and the second year we didn't win, and that was something to do with the likes and everything like that. Um, the, what I really remember, and I, I do hold James in very high esteem musically, what I do remember is that I am I'm passionate about um, steel band and classical music. Right? And I remember the first time I wanted to get into um, doing classical music with James. I really didn't know how to arrange a musical score for the steel band. And I went to James and um, told him I want to do this thing. How, how do you arrange music for steel band? And um, he showed me, and the thing is, when he explained to me, I, I myself am a musician, mm -hmm. so when he explained to me, it, it, it seemed so simple, I thought it was harder, it, it seemed so simple, and he explained to me, and then he, he, he gave me the music, and he said, okay, um, you continue and um, show me, you know, um, what, tell me what you will do here, and so on. So, I, I found it so simple, I said, no, it, it, it must be wrong, so he might not remember that, but I, I said the wrong thing because I said, 
no, I couldn't be that because of, that was so easy. And uh, when he saw me saying the wrong thing, and then he, he just took the rest of the score from me, he said, give it to me, and he, he, he did the rest of it for me. And I was kind of embarrassed. I said to myself, he must be really think that I, I don't know what to do. <laughs> and, um, that year, I, that was the first time I held a, a musical concert with, it was with Angel Hobbs in the convent, I remember um, inviting James right, Claude, it sounded with, with us that time, yes, and I invited James to, um, he, he conducted Angel Hobbs with one of the tunes, because I, I wanted to show him, I, you know, I, I really got what you were showing me, what you were teaching me <laughs> and um, the, the last thing is that very recently in, in, um, in November, and I did, after many years, I did hold a, another classical concert again. And um, this time I was extremely frustrated because, because of um, various reasons, I couldn't get a steel band uh, to, to, um, to play with me. You know, they, they had a choir, and I wanted a steel band as usual to do classical. And who did I go to? I went to James. And I said, you know, this is the problem. I can't get a, a whole steel band to do this thing with me. And he, he, when I, when I um, left him, I was so much more at peace. He, he said, well, you, you don't need a whole steel band. You know, if you have a couple of tenors and a um, double tenor, you know, that could work. And, and um, he told me what, you know, what to do. And, and then he, and just in talking, he did mention of him, himself um, combining brass with steel. And he, he didn't tell me about doing that too, but in the conversation that came up and I said to myself, you know, that's a good idea. So in the show actually, well, he told me he had put a trumpet with the steel, but I used the uh, um, soprano saxophone and um, I had my show, it worked out very well, and James was there. I didn't get any negative um, <laughs> response from James, so I figured, I guess um, he, he did enjoy it. So, so thank you, James, and this, this honor you, you, we are giving him tonight is well deserved. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. This time, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to invite Depo. And uh, again, to make the presentation, excerpts from his writings, and make the presentation officially to Mr. James Knoxon. Thank you, Troy. I know it's uh, been a, a long evening, and some of us are a bit hungry. So this will be short. Um, some people ask me about the book. I'm not a profound writer. Um, this started some years ago as a tribute to my dad. And you would see in the first paragraph a tribute to my dad, Aubrey Depardine, Boar Depardine. And it continued. Now, the name of the book, Between My Rock and Some Hard Places, the rock is not a country. The rock is a community. And I have to explain that. This is not a romance novel, but it's filled with love. This is not science fiction, but it speaks of superheroes. This book is easy reading. You don't need a tractor or a weed cutter to get to the cabin. You can stand on the side wall of the wharf and you would understand what is here. They speak of people like Grube. And Grube is a staple, and was a staple in our community. Now Grube did not tell lies. He did not tell stories. 
he told tall tales. <laughs> and when Groovy would give his story, you left wondering whether it's true or not. In brief, as I leave, there is this one story. They caught me, Renick Ruby, went to a dance in St. Dominic's Hall. He had a humble bike, while he said people like my father had to walk. But when the girls in St. Dominic's Hall hear the bike, they all would rush out and embrace him. Of course, he said he was a good looking one. It so happened that night, the band came, and all the band player, players, female companions, decided they wanted to dance with him. Said he was dancing with three and four ladies at a time. But while dancing, he began to hear wrong notes, and he realized what was happening, they were getting jealous. Now a fight broke, broke out in St. Dominic's school. When he looked around for Aubrey and Philo, I know if Skipper Bruce was saying he probably ran too. <laughs> Rube said he, he beat the band and everybody else there. Now there was a drummer named Sambo. Sambo was a bad drummer and said, David, Rube said he went home, took a shower in his bed, then he heard a fine voice saying, Help! Why are you laughing? Help! <laughs> Ruby said he got up, looked out the window, no one. Went back in, help! Ruby said he decided to look in his jacket pocket. And when he looked in his jacket pocket, he saw some more with his drumstick in his jacket pocket. And we said to him, well, Groovy, if a man end up in a jacket pocket, it means that the jacket pocket would tear, and you said nothing happened. And he realized we had him in a corner. And then he said to us, good Gabardine, man, good Gabardine. <laughs> Excerpts from the book, I would like to urge persons, please get a copy. And uh, now the presentation will be made to... We'd like to invite Mr. Clarkson to please come forward. Once again, Harnage Angel Harps International, Hahai, with our greatest appreciation presented to James Clarkson. Recognition of over 50 years of outstanding and exceptional contribution as a ranger of Angel Harps Steel Orchestra and as coach of the Carnage United Football Club. We now present you with this plaque, James. It's a bit heavy. a copy of the book Between My Rock and Some Hard Places when you purchase the book. In the middle of the book you will see the faces of James Clarkson. When I contacted James to validate this because the publisher saw uniform 
They saw a man in uniform with badges and they say we cannot publish the book unless we get something from Mr. Clark saying you have the authority to do so. James himself did not know of the pictures that we have in the middle of the book. The, the faces of James Clarkson from 1967 up until whenever as police commissioner. So when you purchase the book, you will get a history of James being with us in Barbados in 1971. You would understand what Mr. Clarkson did when he, he put brass and steel together and we decided to play parts and peasants. And we played in, in a, one key, and when the police band came, they played in another key. And it shows how versatile we were. Because we were not reading a music, music sheet, in one day we had to transpose to another key, that's the right word, to another key, and brass and steel went around Grenada. It was nothing like that again, ever. James, we thank you for your service. We thank you for your selflessness. And we say thanks to you once again. I also want to give you this book. This book, The Generation Football Mystic, Peter Perry Ponger. And the author is here with us tonight. Mr. Naka Joseph. Naka Sand. I will hand you my Thank you very much, Jepo. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to invite the man of the moment to please come forward to do as you wish. Please put your hands together for Mr. James Clarkson. Thank you, thank you very much. I never knew that I could have got so many claps. But the good kind. Yeah. Um, I must thank the Caranage Angel House. Um, Professionals, what do you call it? International. For bringing my friends, my family here together this evening. Now, it's, this is something because I don't normally go anywhere unless I get invi invited. And this is the first time I move out in two years, so you know this is the first time I get invited somewhere in two years. So, I had to go. But, um, apart from that, when I was coming here tonight, I had a funny feel feeling coming down from my home to here, because my son was driving. And, if you knew my son way back, when he driving, everything in front of him, he crashed. <laughs> he crashed. So I was kind of thinking, then Brad called me and he wanted to find out where I was. I ain't good on the Morris Bishop I agree. I think I'm going to reach. But Chris improved a lot because he used to crash cheap vehicles in front of him. But from these vehicles that are on the street now, they're very expensive, and his cars are expensive. So all his crashing, done. <laughs> so I got here very safe. Now, I think the MC speak, spoke about the characters and the carnage. I never realized that I was one of the characters. <laughs> Seriously. Because if you remember the carnage, which the majority of you will remember, Mr. Ross will remember, Skipper Bruce will remember, 
My father had a shop at Yong Shui house in Tahdine. So every time the sea come up on the carnage, as a little boy, we watching it going back and we running behind it. Choop! I fall overboard. I can't swim. <laughs> Somebody had to hold me and bring me back to my father. And that went on pretty regular. And but I'm alive. So the other thing with the characters and the carnage, I remember that my father had some pigs that he had to feed. So every afternoon, I have to bring up these two big bucket of food for the pigs on a bike. But I was too short to get over the crossbar. So I had to push my foot between the bars with two big buckets and pedaling going up. And those fellas at the car and I used to have a, a big laugh. Gube, not Gube, uh, Mr. Bernadine used to say that they just used to wait to see when Waka is coming up with the bike. So apparently I was a character too. And I think in the people that they left out, on the carnage is a lady they call Miss Houston. She used to sell some very good thing and there my father used to dump me there to sit down there because he going to Empire, I think it is. Right? So I had to wait by Miss Houston, drink a sweet Bobby or whatever it is until he come back up. And this place, the yacht club, as somebody mentioned it before me has a lot of good feelings for me. Now this activity um, was supposed to take place in another location. But the Lord walked in mysterious reasons. He brought it right back to here. And let me tell you something. This place, how it meant so much to me. My father had a band. And I used to play most of the equipment because just being miserable, just go downstairs and everything. And he used to live just across the ocean. We used to call it Lagundi the ocean because it looks so big to us. And there's only sharks in the thing there. But we didn't know shark could have died. So we would go out there and swim with the sharks. But for some little friendly ones, you know? So we just, they'd be just there and we between them. And the lagoon, all that there was just reclaimed land, right? And he used to send me downstairs, especially on Sunday, to practice. And I want to get here in Tanti to play my football or cricket, whatever they have in season with the guys from the Carnage. So when I did make a noise, plenty noise, and thinking he will get fed up, I will just say, James, you sounding good. <laughs> now, how can I get away to go and play my football or cricket? That is not what I want to hear. I want to hear, James, you're making too much noise. But that never happened. But it seems as though it worked out pretty well. Because he got a, a, a work, a job to play in the yacht club. And I came over to play. And being the youngest in the band, playing most of the instrument, there was a man sitting in the audience and he was taking note of everything apparently. So when we had a break, he came to me and he said, who taught you to play those instruments? I said, well, the instruments, nobody else was there. <laughs> so he said, how would you like to go to the army? I said, the army? The only army I know is the Salvation Army. 
He said, no, not that. The West Indian Regiment. And we are based in Jamaica. Oops, when I hear that, I decide, yes, I want to get there. You know. So he said, um, how, how old are you? Well, I was 17 at the time, but I didn't want to say 17 because I might get left. So I say, I'm 17, very close to 18, <laughs> you know. And he said, come and see me in the fire station on Monday. So I went down to the fire station, and before he knew, I was on a plane heading to Jamaica. I just went up to the, to the GDSS day and tell the, the headmaster, which I call Mr. Smith, the thing up from Babylon, and said, sir, I'm going to Jamaica. No more school for me. And I left. And I spent a couple of years in Jamaica with the West Indian Regiment. And then I think it was, it was Samanti who said he pulled Jamaica out of the, the Federation. And he did. So when he did that, the, the, um, the brains in Trinidad, a man by the name of Dr. Williams, he's the best mathematician I ever know. He said, one from 10 leaves zero. There goes the Federation. <laughs> so the army smashed up, Jamaica keep their people, and people like myself could have chose to stay in Grenada, go to Trinidad, or go to England. I chose to go to, to, to Trinidad. And because I figured, well, on Sunday I could come over here and play with beer and then Sunday morning football. It was easy because those days were about $30 for the plane. So they thought you know, let's come up, go back down, and play for them. But while it's in Trinidad, arranging for the Trinidad and Tobago um, National Steel Band, and then the Defense Force Band, I met a guy, or a guy met me, and he came and he said, you're Grenadian? Now I didn't know Grenadian had a special way looking. So, I said, yes, I'm Grenadian. He said, well, I'm from Grenada too. All the time I'm trying to figure out how he figured I is a Grenadian. He tell me his name is, I think, Linky or something like that. He tell me he was working with a band, steel band in Grenada, in the southern. And we had a, a chat. Anyway, I went and studied, and somebody mentioned that, um, the thing about me changing my citizenship because I, I couldn't deal with that when the, the, they wanted, if I wanted a scholarship, I had to change my citizenship and I refused because I knew I was getting um, to go to McGill University in Canada, so I refused. So when I came back to Grenada, the Prime Minister um, came to Expo 67 saw me being in charge of the thing. He knew me from Grenada, and he come up to my tax. How are things going? I say, things going all right. He say, what you doing? I say, well, I'm still in school and things. He say, look, when you finish school, I have a job for you. I know Mr. Gary, I know he always blah, 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 blah. But about a month after, I got a letter from him invited me to Grenada. He said he has a job waiting for me. So I, when I finished, I came back thing, and at 25 years, I was an inspector in the force in charge of the police van. So I took over the police van and lived from there. And by 37, I was the commissioner of police. How would it happen? I don't know. But <laughs> I was. But we're not, we're not here to just even to speak about the police. I think that's a different thing at the fish. But the point I'm making here, this place, um, the Yacht Club, had a lot, a lot, a lot of 
meaning to me getting away from Grenada and being who I am today. Now, when I got started now with Angel Harps, the, the name wasn't Angel Harps at the time, I as an inspector of police, they were practicing by Braffitt shop, I think it was a Coles Market or something like that. And I was there with them. And one night, the same link came you know, back in Grenada. He, he, came, he came to me and he said, we, we need to get some pans, some drums. So I wanted to find out where you get the drums from. So I said, where do you get the drums? He said, well, you get the drums in the park. So I said, the drums are in your own? He said, no. So I said, how are you going to get it? He said, we go, we go and take it. Now can you imagine, I'm a police officer. This guy going to thief some pants and telling the police that he's going to thief some pants. <laughs> and he wanted me to protect them. <laughs> that was my introduction to Angel House. You know, I'm wondering now, if, I, if a senior police above me, my rank, see us, no, you wouldn't have been having this conversation here because I was out of it. But luckily enough, we went and put on the crime and get back on the crime act and judge the fans to chew. And I keep shaking my head every single time I see me and the thing. I guess that's why I spent over 50 years with them. I couldn't leave because somebody might have gone to But I stayed with them. But that was my introduction to the labs. And um, the last thing I would say with Angel House, my father decided he'd come down to listen to the band practice one night. And he, when I get back home, he said, but James, were you teaching them people there? Don't you know when you go to Panorama or what you call it, everybody don't get drunk? <laughs> Didn't listen to that? <laughs> Do some other thing, play something else. But I, I couldn't play anything else because that is all strange. <laughs> so, Agent Harps, that's why Troy and them used to say the sweetest band in the time. But we, you know, I brought a different texture to it. And I'm happy that I spent that length of time with them. And I, I still on my, my two feet. And I'm not saying I, I have more to go. But I can't give my life more time. But what I can do is give more time to the life that I have. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please stand and put your hands together for Mr. James Larson. Again, thank you very much, thank you very much. And uh, you may have your seats, there are a couple of announcements we'd like to make. Again, thank you very much, sir, for your contribution. Depo, thank you very much for a job well done. Thank you so very much. I would like to encourage persons, please, to secure a copy of the book. Depo mentioned Naka Joseph, who is doing something similar in the St. John's area highlighting and profiling outstanding persons in that area, similar to what is being done here. He, he has been doing a lot, lot of writing, and I think we'd like to encourage him and congratulate him. Naka, thank you very much for, for a job well done. As we leave here, we just want to remember that despite what we think or feel, that the band will always be the sweetest band in the land, despite all the issues. And one will hope that they will understand, the present management of the band will understand the linkage and the importance of the band to the community. And when I say the, co the community, I mean the wharf, and by extension all the areas. It's not just about what's happening in Tantini, 
It's about an area, a community that this band have served and it should be recognized and it should continue. And most importantly, I think we ought to know that persons who are of the opinion that what we see on the wharf today, trust me, I want to let it be known loud and clear, that is not the wharf. The wharf is deeper in history and rich in traditions and all the elements, not what we're seeing and we're hearing today. So leave here with that understanding and that appreciation that the wharf has contributed immensely to this country. We heard of from Skipper Bruce, we heard from the coach himself and many other persons, doctors and lawyers and you know, that is what the wharf has been all about, not what we're seeing and hearing today. And last but not least, that rendition, sir, of Bright Out of Darkness, trust me, is something that stands, it's beyond. Congratulations and thank you very much. Again, on behalf of the organizers, I want to thank you very much for coming, for sharing the experience. Please, do the right thing. Secure a copy of that book and hold on to it and ensure that it lives. There will be some refreshments, sir. There will be some more music from the Angel Harps. And again, thank you so very much. Thank you, thank you very, very much for sharing this evening here with us. And we'd like you to please, for those who would like to partake in the Little Finger Fools and all the elderly persons, the older persons, the senior citizens, to please come forward and do enjoy. So again, to the wharf, Congratulations to Mr. Clarkson. Congratulations. And thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Let the legacy, let the legacy of the war continue to live. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Again, you like um, persons, please come and partake. The, you know, don't. Neither person is partake in the live refreshments. And again, please get an autograph copy from Depo of his writings. And uh, thank you so very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, thank you so very much. Greatly appreciate it. <laughs>